to Dial H, guys. Today we're doing another Silver Age discussion, specifically around retaliation, after we got some comments, some messages asking kind of to go more in depth on retail. It is a very large part of Silver. Yes. It's one of the scariest mechanics. It's very strong, and it's probably something that you're going to see quite frequently. I know that if I'm playing Silver, retaliation is one of the things I look to to maybe build around and also to round out a team. How do you feel about it, Simeon? I think that it's definitely something that you always have to consider, uh, especially if you're a newer player and you've been playing in modern, maybe even competitive modern, retaliation is not what it used to be. No. <laughs> it's not as big as it used to be because there's not as many figures that do it anymore. I think in modern we have five, four, something like that. Most of them aren't even yeah. the colossal size. So the main thing is how retaliation works. And uh, it's a free action, most usually, not always, but for most of them, it's a free action, which is huge. It's great for action economy. And if a friendly character was damaged or the retaliator themselves was targeted, uh, you can basically warp across the map. There, it just says place, where like within a certain range, it's all different depending on the character. Mm -hmm. And then you either make close or range attack. And there's different effects. Each one of them is pretty much different. But uh, yeah, it's essentially a free attack a lot of free uh extra powers that they have yes and then um there's a lot of a lot of free stuff going on yeah. so essentially like the way retaliation can function is like simeon said if a friendly character was damaged or if they were attacked almost always this is how it functions there's a few with like different ones they get to then place and make that attack they all almost not all of them there's a few you know uh what differences there Almost all of them have Colossal Indifference, which is yeah. they can't normally attack somebody who's a smaller size, so they are only attacking through the Retaliation ability. So in order to get those off, there are builds that might look to trigger them through different means, and there are some that simply just sit in the starting area yep. and it's just a kind of wait for you to attack, because yep. attacking is something that will happen in 99.9% .9 of matches. Maybe there's a weird mat mission point team that doesn't. So, yeah, we're going to get into it. We're going to talk about some of the retaliators that you might see and some that are just particularly nasty that you, you definitely will see. So we'll start off with some honorable mentions that might make a force but aren't, like, the defining ones necessarily. Do you have a one on your um, mind right now, Simeon? So one of my honorable mentions is one that I most recently played, and that's the XDPS uh, Magneto. He's a rare. Ooh. He's standard size, so he doesn't have that indifference. His retaliation isn't exactly why you're playing him, but not for nothing, it is a ranged one, which is fairly rare. That means With an eight range as well. An eight range, so on a smaller map, he can stay quite protected. He has sidestep TK, traded leadership, and he has a free place, one, like a, a character within range, one square. So that even works on two by twos, shuffling them or three by sixes you uh, can anyone free move your galactuses yeah. a galactus can yeah completely shift that's pretty cool uh but yeah he's really just an awesome tech piece and so cheap for like it's just one click but it's 25 points super utility very nice and that higher range in today's game yeah is a uh, it's it's great On i mean you always map, have to look at range and silver age i think that's something that you know when you have the option of these larger range figures when larger maps were the only thing we were playing on it's a big difference and yeah the uh the free placement with magneto that was a big reason why people did play him back when he was modern because the way that works if you target a two by two or a three by six figure you're choosing a square for them to move into so you can essentially spin the like spin where they are so it's not just like moving them up one adjacent like you could place the back end of their dial ahead so they're essentially moving two so you can essentially hand out sidestep to one of those larger figures yep. and on top of the tk the leadership yeah he's he's yeah. fantastic i absolutely love that one as well i think an honorable mention for me is actually sitting on this table right now it is the ameridroid right here he is very interesting he's only 15 points he also has the scientist keyword which is a fantastic keyword if you still are looking to build theme with those scott porters coming out it's probably going to be more common than you think um his retail functions as a, so it's the similar thing where if a friendly character was damaged or if he was attacked, you can place him. And then after he targets them, he doesn't even have to hit. Right. He gets to place an opposing character six squares away. And so because he's a giant reach of three, you can place him up to three away from them. And then after the attack, hit or miss, he gets to place them six squares away from himself. 
So effectively, like an 11 square swing, because if they're yeah. three in front of you. Three in front, and then, so that's one, five two, from three, his back four, dial. Yes, yeah, from his back. And then another six. Uh, it's a very, it's not a great retaliator as far no. as damaging. Low attack. It's 10 potentially four. four yeah. yeah. Uh, it also does, he's one of the ones that will target everyone, including friendlies. So that is something that is you have true. to watch out for. But it's mostly, hey, you hit one of my guys. I'm going to take like your big piece that did that. Like if they're playing a one man army, you just kind of kill box them, which is a strategy where you you throw them back to like an area where all your throw them team to the is going to just, yeah, maul them. <laughs> uh, it's a figure I've played a lot of times, especially in silver. I had a good time. With and that. I just, I love the effect. It's so easy to pull off because like all Colossal Retaliation, your team's going to get attacked. He's not really a big threat, so they might not make him a priority. But once he does that, then... You, you know. could completely just, you know, reposition them, like taking out one of their big guys, and then all of a sudden, all your pieces no longer need to be TK'd or moved across the map. Like, he effectively moved them 11 squares, which is almost half a map. Yeah. So, in the event of that, you know, you can completely disconnect somebody from their team and then just light them up. So, for 15 points, he's not something that your opponent's going to, I think, think of as this massive threat. They're not going to look at them the same way as, like, a Dark Phoenix, who we'll talk about later here but uh, can definitely, definitely get you a big leg up on your opponent. So he makes my honorable mention list. Yeah. Uh, Giant Girls would be next. Um, sure. I think that they're, they were mostly saw a lot of play when Avengers was a big theme to play with, but realistically, you can play them on pretty much anything. Uh, the main set Giant Girl had a 10-point dial that uh, it was just a single click at 10 points or any additional increment of 10 points got you another click. And then in addition to that, if she KO'd something, she got to heal. So that was another wild one. And then the Fast Forces version of that was one of the only ones that could trigger a retail after another character triggered a retail already. Mm -hmm. So normally, a you can follow only, up retail. Yeah, you can normally only pop off once with a retail per turn. But that Fast Force Giant Girl saw a lot of play because she could double up on that. And that's pretty crazy. Yeah, when you think about like the stacking of it, it is pretty wild. Also, Close Combat Expert now being a passive ability with the mm -hmm. newest rule changes. She's an 11 for 3. She's only 10 points. And on top of that, she's also just a sidestep piece. And she's giant, so she can help reposition your team. She can body block for you. And then if you do have another retail to uh, go along with her, she is able to just do that follow-up. It can be pretty nasty. We've seen these plated multiples before to a great degree of success. So I think Giant Girl... While she is like an honorable mention for us, I do think she will be one of the ones that is more popular just because like if you are building a team around retail or maybe it's not a centerpiece, but it is like a function of your team, this is a great, great thing to plug in as, you know, the follow up, the only one who can do that in the game. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very nice. And an 11 for three attack for free, can't brush it off. And then you can do a follow up as well. Or hers is a power actually. Sorry. I think... Ooh. One of them is free, one of them is power. One of them is free, one of them is power. It'll yeah. be on screen. You can decide for yourself I know how they'll work. <laughs> in, in 2018, when I was running Avengers good stuff kind of teams, I these were my taxis. They yeah, they carried all of the smaller figures. You can't underlook sidestep. It was, it's so cheap. And action economy, like obviously you're using three actions to carry three people. But realistically, then they are these huge shields in front of your team that your opponent has to get through or... Not, I mean, yeah, that's their two <laughs> or not. Options, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, along those same lines, we'll do a couple more honorable mentions here. I think one that's worth mentioning that isn't necessarily going to be looked at as a retail piece so much as like moving blocking terrain is often what he's referred to. It is the Flora Colossus mm. of the Mighty Thor set. It's a 10 point figure, and then if they occupy watering terrain, you get to roll a d6 and potentially heal them. That is a stop click on the last click. So you don't want to waste your time hitting these 10-point figures that essentially do nothing. His retail is really weak. It's just a basic attack, low yeah. stats. But if you want to really annoy your opponent, these are a great figure and a great target for the Magneto yeah. to move up in front of your team and just make it more of a pain to uh, shoot at your team. If you have people with improved targeting characters, Flora Colossuses are great for shooting through. So like I'm saying, they are moving blocking. If you heal them up just one... Now you're having to double tap them. You're having to potentially waste two actions to kill one of these guys for 10 points. 
and you're not removing any power from my force really so the no. floras are i played the floras a lot i ran an ultra chase thanos team back in the day that ran four of them and it was a great time there's another team i i believe nationals that ran six yeah. for a big theme bonus and then yeah you're just never hitting thanos at that point so i love those guys they're not exactly the classic retail you're looking for but if you are looking for something that might annoy your opponent, might protect you a bit more, Flora is a fantastic option. Yeah. Uh, a reason you might consider not playing those 10-point kind of guys is also on this table. Dark Phoenix is just a devourer of cheap, uh, throwaway kind of figures. When theme was high and people really wanted to win map, having that cheap stuff was dangerous because things like Dark Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So she has a classical retail, but she doesn't have colossal indifference. So she has true. 10 printed range with sidestep, giving her a triple effective, bolt. Yeah, triple bolt. An effective reach of 12 with that, uh, just right out the start gate. And that's not even including if she retaliates. When she does, it deals two penetrating damage to mm -hmm. all characters within three squares, I believe. And then uh, she's healing for every time, every time she does four or more damage yeah. or KOs something. Or KOs. Uh, so if you have bystanders, yeah. or if you have those low point figures, Dark Phoenix is, he, she's in the buffet line. She's yeah. ready to go. <laughs> she's a she's, big threat. Because of, well, because she's such a big threat, uh, she's usually the first target. You don't mm -hmm. like to let her pop off. Like, no. you, you'll go out of your way I can avoid game attacking. Enemy. Yeah, there's, there's ways you can kind of avoid it, but it's mostly avoiding dealing your opponent damage or targeting until you can take care of her. Uh, we saw teams with two or three of her at one point. Like, mm -hmm. it was, you know, problematic at certain points but it is just a super solid figure even still uh like anything that heals off of a stop click for such cheap points it's dangerous yeah like if you let it, it is pop 30 off, points it can, yeah so she is one She's of the higher one point of the more retails ones. and like simeon said i mean talk to anybody who played in this era you're 100 percent correct this is the first thing i'm killing i ran dark phoenix a little bit not a ton but anytime i did Almost always, somebody was catapulting something across the map to ping Phoenix for one, just because it's like, I cannot risk this going off. Because if it does, like seriously, if this thing heals up, like she goes to like range combat expert, like if we click her up just once, she's now 12 for four from range. Mm -hmm. Click her up again, same story. Click her up three times, she's hypersonic precision strike. She, uh, yeah, she doesn't quit. So she is definitely probably one of the most classical examples of a like true retaliation where you are playing her 100% with the retail, but at the same time, just being able to sidestep and shoot for 10 on the smaller maps could be pretty solid. Yeah. You know, the full, she, full map reach almost. Themes excellently on uh, Cosmic, but even better on X-Men. X-Men's yes, huge X -Men's great. and silver. Um, and it's only going to get bigger as the game progresses, but yeah. Playing her on X-Men teams is super easy, and she is just super nuts. But definitely a big target if you put that on the board. Most people will, if they played while she was legal, they'll have a game plan for something oh, like yeah. that in silver. Immediately. <laughs> but uh, you might have your own game plan, so yeah. This is true. Well, I suppose we will start to get into what we think are some of the big bads of the retail world. And uh, we did talk about this one in a previous video. If you want to check out our latest video, the Silver Age review, we did talk about this guy. His name is Groot. He's yep. a two by two from the Avengers Infinity set. And we stated in the last video that he was quite literally on every team. Yep. Uh, cosmic theme was fantastic for this reason. I mean, seriously, this guy just does so much. He's your leadership. He's more than likely not going to be on a Guardians theme. So he gets an 11 attack and 18 defense. At the start of the game, if you can generate a Leslie Evans token in your opponent's starting area, he gets to bring in two Walking Woods, which are sidestep, plasticity, flurry, shape change, pieces that have no point costs associated with them. Yeah. So if you have a figure like Flash to bring those guys up, or you know any taxi, getting those guys in your opponent's face, making them deal with them, making them waste actions on those guys, and if they don't, they're potentially spitting out some serious damage. If you have another retail in your starting area, or Groot, Forcing them to deal with stuff like that, and then you get to retail on top of that. It's like, they're not scoring points. You are threatening them from across the map with your other retails or Groot. And seriously, guys, when when Groot retails too, he gets to make another walking one if he hits. The value yes. on this guy does not stop. I think if there was like a list for things that you should pick up in silver, yeah. Groot might be like number one on that list. He fits on He's very so close. Many teams. 
whether theme or not theme, like it's an awesome 20 points to spend. If you have a non-theme team and no leadership, he is probably the best point for point leadership that you can add. Mm -hmm. And then on Cosmic and Silver, I think it's just always a good idea. Straight up for the the Walking Woods can put in a ton of damage. Yes. And then while he's not a classical retaliation threat, like you're not worried about him actually damaging you. Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, like if, if your opponent has enough actions like, and they retaliate with Groot and he drops a Walking Wood, you're not just getting attacked and hit by Groot, you're also getting flurried by a Walking Wood that turn. And they've got decent stats for a Ten zero for three. point thing. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty nasty. I've had multiple games where it came down to us like me chasing my opponent or my opponent chasing me with just walking woods and uh it's scary it's it's hard to get away from them it really is the plasticity too like yeah although they are zero points and although you are giving your opponent the leslie evans and outwit bystander i don't think anyone in the history of hero clicks has ever questioned that trade-off no i, I think everyone's just like yeah take the leslie yeah. I'll, I'll happily take the woods so yeah Expect to run in into Groot. He, uh, yeah, like leadership is a power you've always built with. Plain and simple. Retail is always a good mechanic. And then free bystanders. Who doesn't like those? I'll tell you who loves them. Dark Phoenix does. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, hopefully you're killing her before that happens. But so I mean, Groot, on a small easy map, top three. On a small map that Leslie yes. Evans can uh, be a target for Dark Phoenix pretty easily. So, yeah, depending on what you're building with, you could pretty much make a very functional like retaliation only team it has it's actually like won worlds before retail yeah. is that strong that you can build around the mechanic and you know if you have enough threats spread out like i think it's yeah, so it's tough to deal with 2018 tyler spees had two giganto namors at 50 and then a mini shredder and then the rest of the team <laughs> yeah. almost almost half the points Surger, were Groot. retaliation was it like man gog maybe I don't carnage think it, was it wasn't man gog carnage. yeah yeah, because it was all it was a monster theme, and so yeah, it was just all like all monster stuff. But um, yeah, they're yeah they're nasty guys. Uh, other big retaliation, Simeon. Who's on your mind? Uh, my, I think I'm gonna go with my least likely to be seen, and that's Fulcum. So Fulcum, yeah, Fulcum. I really like him not just because his retaliation gets rid of defense powers, and he can deal a bunch of damage. He has two copyable team abilities that are great. Yes. And then he also has on dial prob for 25 points. So And that's I mean, more valuable today with yeah, theme teams. With theme no teams longer granting no longer them. having prob. Um, it's a commodity to have actual prob. And then he's got he's colossal, so he can see over most things on certain maps. And he's got like I think eight range, seven range. Seven. Yeah, yeah, seven range. So he's got a pretty decent range. He can actually hide himself in hindering and be in stealth, even though he's colossal. It's pretty crazy. This but is true. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> Uh, it's a great figure. I think you might not retail with them as much, but you'll definitely get use out of that prop. And if the retail and the team ability ends up too. working, the team abilities, anyone that's a wild card, that's just great options. Having stealth permanently or being able to see through stealth, two amazing options. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad Wonder Woman wasn't around to uh, give him that team oh, ability. Oh gosh! Even though he came out, I think he was designed before they made that team ability. Because I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, he, he was a delayed had... release due to COVID, all that stuff going yeah. on at the time. And it is weird. Although he is one of like the only modern retails, he really didn't see that much play. Like there yeah. is so many point efficient lower point figures that. Uh, Falcom never quite really made his mark. And I think, you know, like the psychology of building, a lot of people latch on to what other people are doing. It's kind of like a chain effect. So I think Falcom may be one of those figures that was pushed to the wayside. We did have a local player who played Falcom all the time, and he did pretty well with him. So I think there's definitely a case for him. It's kind of along the same lines as Groot, right? Where, yeah. you know, if you're not getting necessarily the big retail like you'd like to with Dark Phoenix, you are getting those copyable team abilities. Batman and Superman, you are getting the prop. So... I think you're always getting some value out of him. So Falcom is definitely a great mention. Yeah. I think another one to get into, and we just, we have to talk about him. This guy is, is a menace. He's a nine range, triple target, <laughs> pulse waving retail. He's massive. Unfortunately, we don't have one to show off. Uh, yeah. He's back home at the moment. But uh, try Sentinel. This guy, uh, we won't get super heavy into it. There were some rule changes that allowed him to be really stupid, but he is still, like, a fantastic figure. Uh, his big thing is that when he destroys blocking um, 
characters adjacent to that blocking take one penetrating damage. Mm -hmm. He has improved movement, destroy blocking. He's got that nine range again, so he can just point to something and shoot it. And then when he pulse wave, or when he retells, sorry, he gets to pulse wave. So it's a four range now. It used to be five because yeah. you know that's the new rules. But uh, it all that also destroys all blocking within range of the pulse wave. Yeah. So that's potentially dealing another one penetrating to everybody adjacent. He's also energy shield deflection. So he did mind control for some reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's a twenty defense. He's really like you don't want to be shooting at this guy. He's not necessarily harder to take down, but a lot of the time with Tri Sentinel, this is one of the retails that people more so build around than others. He's also mystical keyword, so he's been a, a big point yeah. of like keyword theming. Um, when you have multiples of him and you're going up with your team, if you don't kill all of them, him getting to pulse wave and destroy blocking next to you, like potentially just two damage to you know your whole team or a large part of your team, it can be devastating. Yeah. And the nine range to do so, to do those destroys, especially on a, a small map, being colossal, being able to see those pieces of blocking, Tri Sentinel is absolutely devastating. So many people have run him to great success. We've seen him on so many different builds, whether it's just one, whether it's four, some people run six. It's wild. So Tri Sentinel, I think he's relatively cheap right now. I think you can pick one up on eBay for around $20 to $25. I would definitely do so if you're looking at building more retail centric teams. Tri Sentinel, Maybe my number one pick for retails. I think Groot's up there for me as yeah. well. But I got, do you have anything to add on Tri Sentinel there? I got a lot of mileage out of Tri Sentinel. Uh, 2018 to 2019, I used him a lot, and he actually got a small boost that most people might own. Well, maybe some people haven't realized, but now that you can end your movement in blocking, he destroys oh. blocking when moving. So if you yeah. throw out like a little square barrier or you know, maybe there's just like a square of a wall or something. If he ends his movement in that and there's adjacent opposing characters to that. Also, he has plasticity. He does. <laughs> For whatever reason. He's also a flyer, so he can carry other colossals. Yes. There's just there's so many things I love about that figure. Um, I played three in 2018 Worlds. I lost to that team. It, uh, the, actually, the day I met Simeon, he beat me with uh, <laughs> Triple Sentinel and like... I think it was like three Joker's Wild Green was, Lanterns. Uh, yeah, two Joker's Wild Green Lanterns. And Shade. Sheriff. Um, it and was uh, Night. Nightshade. Nightshade. Yeah, Nightshade. Yeah, there we go. Nightshade. Yeah, so my, my thing was like Nightshade would move up into Hindering. She would yank him across as a power action. And then I would literally just walk over to my opponent's starting area. Like turn two. It was so brutal. Destroy something. And if they were playing multiple retiles, all I had to do was get one square blocking that was adjacent to some of them. And that's three points, three points, three points. I don't even make an attack. And his pulse I didn't know what Tri Sentinel did in that yeah. tournament either. So well, I was like, hey man, nice to meet you. Great game. Yeah, when <laughs> that, I was, was, that was a really cool team. I played it in Worlds and uh, didn't do great, but I had so much fun. And that like year, I don't know if he had just been released like a month prior or what, but I was one of like maybe five people that was playing it that year. He was not hot right away. Yeah, it's was, crazy. People joked about that strategy. I was actually at a venue. This is a bit of a side tangent, but this is how cool and good Tri Sentinel is. <laughs> uh, I remember being at my local venue and hearing that, like, yeah, you know, you can just throw down barrier and ping it with Tri Sentinel, and everyone's like, oh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. That's a cool little strategy. And then that strategy went on to um, do absolutely absurd change or do absurd things and then rule changes happened that made tri sentinel even better where he could do his retail ability for free it's really really stupid we won't get into it yeah but that joke of a strategy ended up being like yeah just peak meta <laughs> so that was really funny uh, we talked last ep or last video uh Silver Silver Age Age. discussion yeah we talked about ping damage from shredders and he fits into that same kind of slot where he can move into blocking, but it really helps if you have someone that generates free blocking, and there's so many characters that do that. Mandarin Ring for five points gives you free blocking. Yeah. There's so many combos with Tri-Sentinel. We have talked up a storm about him. Yeah. Seriously, guys, read through him a bit. Look at how you can really take advantage of that blocking. Maybe he's a case where you actually really want to run themes so you can get those heavy blocking maps. You know, now you have a super big advantage with moving, You've got the super big advantage of blowing it up wherever they are. But the free barrier stuff, there's so many ways to do it. So try Sentinel, I think, might be like a unanimous number one. He's, he's, he's close. Yeah, he's pretty close. If he's not number one, it's it's hard to buck him off that list because he just does so much for 30 points. Really does. Yeah.
Simeon, who would you like to talk about next? It's got to be the the ten point king of made it to almost every team, and that's Carnage. <laughs> so yeah. there's a there's a legacy Carnage that's legal, and then there's the original non legacy version that's also legal. And both of them have reasons why you might play one over the other. The newer one, he reduces super senses by minus one, which is great. Right. Very that's very good. Just a global, global effect for ten points. There's not even an equipment that does that. That's just no. kind of nuts. For 10 points. I don't think there's anything in the game that does that. No, really. not really. Other than a 10 point figure. Yeah. Who ten, can heal past yeah. the starting line? If he uh, yeah, retail blades. When he retails and blades, he gets to heal equal to half of his blades result, which mm -hmm. is wild healing past the starting line. That wasn't something the previous one did. Oh. Uh, what the previous one did do was make bystanders, and he didn't have to hit to do it. So, unlike Groot, he could drop the symbiotes just by targeting and attacking. And those were awesome. They were plasticity, blades, what, super senses, shape and change? Shape. Du a double rollout blades piece with plasticity. If you want to talk about yeah. annoying, and then once again, we go back to kind of what we talked about with Groot. They don't score anything for these. So just plopping those next to them and saying, like, hey. You have to deal with this. Come on. <laughs> like you, you can't ignore a double rollout. Well, you can't ignore it because it's got blades. Yeah. You can't easily break away because it's got plasticity. You're either wasting an outwit on this zero point bystander, or you're wasting an attack and hoping to KO it. Maybe, maybe you get poison or something, but yeah, poison is that's really the only very way to deal with a lot of these situations. Yeah, <laughs> most retails have reducers, but like pen poison is can be your best friend, or a shredder can be a, your best friend for dealing with everything we're talking about, yeah. guys. Free ping damage is fantastic against these guys. Yeah, and it really man, is. That uh, the carnage, as far as the argument goes for which one is like better, Simeon's kind of right. There's a case for both. I think in general, I'm reaching for the legacy card first, just because that global effect is so good. Yeah. Healing past the starting line means now more than likely you have to sink two actions into killing carnage because it's like I'm gonna hit my stop, then I'm gonna KO, maybe have a flurry to deal with that. But the bystander generation, you cannot discount like. Plasticity can lock you up so easily if you don't have the proper improved movement, TK, things like that. So Carnage, 10 points. I mean, you can't go wrong with the guy, whether that's legacy or not. He is He's fantastic. Yeah. It's also very expensive. Yeah. Carnage <laughs> was one of the ones where you wanted an indoor map, a very closed off thing. And you still kind of do, but with the newer one, I think it's easier to play on a smaller map or to play in like an open map. He does have one of the lowest defenses for any retaliation. Yeah, 16. 16 toughness. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much anything can take him out. But if you're playing him, you might consider playing some like floor colossals to play in front of him to like, yeah. you know. Another very popular strategy, you know, going back really quickly to floor colossals. Uh, Dark Phoenix, the first target, right? There were people who would play three or four floor colossals and then just wrap their Phoenix in them. Yep. So good luck dealing with that. Unless you have like penetrating energy explosion, it's not going to kill Dark Phoenix because Pulse Wave isn't going to work either because all of their defense powers are stop clicks, which are protected by Pulse Wave. So you need a very specific thing to kill that. And once again, if something like Dark Phoenix is retailing or a couple figures we'll talk about later here, uh, the Floras, once again, are fantastic and protecting things like Carnage is great. And also to touch on kind of the general philosophy you proposed there where it's like, you know, previously you'd want like closed indoor maps for the retails. With how efficient figures have become in these lower point ranges, you have so many more threats on your team than these retails. Retails are still eating up a very small portion of your team. So you can get away a bit, a little bit more with playing on like more open maps because if you come and kill this retail, I still have, you know, 290, 270 points of whatever else. Yeah. Maybe that is my strategy. Maybe I want you to waste actions yeah. killing you, my retails. You over overreach across the map to kit my my dark phoenix and it's like that's great now my jubilee my wolverine my you know blah blah Sack blah man, yeah everything's flash. coming after you next turn or at least that character next turn and you expended uh, how much for how many points mm -hmm. so there there's great great philosophies so many different things you can do with these retails it can be bait it can be the center point of your team it can be a follow up it can be a defensive reaction it can be you know, a popular strategy with retail in general, again, is like running an Alpha Strike team, running all the way across the board, messing them up a bit. And it's like, if you attack all my guys who are now in front of you, I still have this guy in the back here. Yeah. And trust me, you don't want to deal with this. That was a popular strategy with the figure we'll talk about next, 
which is Mangog. Yep. yep. <laughs> Simi, you want to you want to chat <clears throat> about Mangog a bit here? I actually uh, never played him. Uh, really? Man, yeah, never um, owned him. I played I, against him a ton. I loved playing Mangog. So he has one really cool effect that is pulling the Odin sword, where you click him up. If he's in your opponent's starting area, you click him up to his next starting line. Doesn't matter if he was damaged or not. Obviously, if he's on his retaliation click, his only next up line is 150. But you could do this at the 150 and click him up to like 300 or whatever. And so it's kind of like, well, really rare. Figures don't it's, work like that normally. If you thought you were gunning for Dark Phoenix, let me tell you. You see Mangog, yeah, yeah. I'm gunning for him. But what makes, makes Mangog harder to deal with is he's a 19 defense. With Impervious. With Impervious. On a stop. He's also, I believe, the most... Excuse me, the most expensive retaliator, 35? Yeah, I think Yeah, I think he's right at there. He might be 30, I don't remember right off the top of my head. But um, yeah, his his retaliation, I'm, I saw it the most played with like a Sam Cap drop-off team because that was the same time those kind of things were going on. Sam Cap came out in ADW, Mangog came out the Mighty Thor um, just like a few months after, a year after. So, it was around the same time. Yeah. yeah, you would run up with Sam Cap, maybe do like an ID call in, get a couple attacks off, whatever. And now your whole team or a majority of your team's clustered up there. And if they do anything to those people, Mangog's going to come over into your starting area, which is not where you want him. Or close to and then sidestep into it. Yep. And then that's a free action. So you can still power action to pull the Odin sword. And what does his retail do, Simeon? His retail targets all characters within. Yeah. Three squares, four squares. I think it's, it's everyone within three squares, all opposing characters, and it deals four damage if it hits. And then he does it again for three damage. <laughs> so it can potentially like wipe a out a whip. swarm team. Like anything that's clustered up just has to be really careful. Uh, the way that you can position him to single out certain characters, like you can have the target character in the first half of the attack, but not in the second half. And so, like, that's, like, an option if you are trying to focus on characters that didn't hit a friendly character and you just want to really, like, focus on those guys. Your opponent was trying to be, like, sneaky. Yeah. They can't get away from him. It. It's no really hard. I know back when I ran Vulture, um, Vulture would just run through Colossal Retaliators. And the yeah, one he's, I... He was real dumb. I hated to see Mangog because he had Impervious. And the one time that I did, like, face off against him, uh, he hit Impervious twice. Didn't matter because it was Vulture, but still, it's like a scary thing. And uh, yeah, a protected pulse wave impervious for almost yeah, yeah, almost no points. It's just wild. He's, he's another retail where you're looking at. I'd like to protect this guy because if he pops off, yeah, similar to Dark Phoenix, similar to you know maybe another one we'll talk about here soon. <laughs> uh, if this guy pops off, that could quite literally be the game. So you have to deal with Mangog right away. He is 35 points, so he's taken up over a tenth of your build. Ooh. You know, but in today's game, that's considerable. You know, that's that's super rare flash right there. That's mm -hmm. the Scott Porter plus 10 points. Other crazy utility pieces, Molecule Man, yeah. Equipments, all that jazz. And so Mangog, if he's getting across the board, whapping you for four, whapping you for three, sidestepping into your starting area, pulling the Odin Sword, now he's 150 points. Yeah. The game's over. It's done. He is only a 10 attack, but you can always perplex that. So if you want to run a team that is more centered around popping off with the retail, like you really want to get that big damage off, like centering around the retail, Mangog is a great, great place to start. Man, he's, he's nasty. Price-wise, I think you can pick him up for around 40 to 50 bucks. He looks like a McDonald's toy. <laughs> so weird looking. He's like, like one of those that. super old Thor villains. Where he is like his size would just like randomly be different and oh, different he's like huge in hero place. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's a, a comic panel where his like whole head is taking up like a door frame. He like does the like here's Johnny. <laughs> hey, what you doing? <laughs> yeah. But it's like he he does look very cartoonish. Uh, but he's not a cartoon. He will destroy your hero clicks theme if you're it, not careful. It'll turn you into a cartoon. Uh, from the same set and a very similar sculpt is. Surter. Oh man. So 25 points. Uh, Surter does, once again, something that I'm just like is kind of nutso when he retaliates. And you also have to mention his big 12 attack. Yeah. Oh my. Like that is just a printed his raw 12. 12. Yeah. yeah. And what he's doing is he's coming across the board in similar fashion as all the retails, activates the same way, but he ignores defense powers when he attacks. 
And after he attacks, whether he hit or missed, he gets to do one penetrating damage to all opposing characters within three, correct? I think it's three or two. It's three. yeah, it's like a little burst effect. It's a effect. splash effect. It'll be on screen. And, uh, Sorry, guys. We don't have them to reference in front of yeah, us. Yeah. <laughs> again, just like Tri-Sentinel, just like Shredders, anything like that, if he pops off and your opponent's got all these like little cheap one-click pieces, like they're also running retaliation and they let you pop off first. Sayonara. You're wiping their team, like Good not their whole team, but a lot. Yeah. And you're also hitting potentially a key figure 12 for three. And uh, I do just want to mention this because I think it's hilarious. I've heard a lot of talk about it. Mad Jim Jaspers, Prime from X of Swords, he can do a power action to equip anybody. They don't have to be standard. So you can give Surter something like the Power Gem. So now he has Close Combat Expert plus one damage. So he's a 13 for five. Yeah. And then he gets to do the one pen as well. I don't know if that's entirely worth it, but if you built a team around like really bumping somebody up, you can do the same thing with Mangog even. Uh, yeah, you could give him Frog Olnir to make him tiny and double tap. He doesn't get the colossal Because then he doesn't reach. have the colossal indifference. Yeah, they're, from they're all tiny. Yeah, they're all the same size or bigger at that point. But um, there's a lot of stuff that, yeah, just like gets real wonky once you get into these. He introduced Mad Jim. He can do crazy stuff. Yeah. We don't need to go super deep into that. But no. Surter, I think he's pretty straightforward. He is a point click retail. Um, yeah. There's some interesting ways to build with him. Once again, this is a figure where. If you see him across the board, trust me, you'll see him too. He's massive. Yeah. <laughs> Big red man. Uh, <laughs> you're looking at that and going, okay, if I don't deal with this, we're going to have problems. There seems to be a recurring theme yeah. of that, huh, Simeon? I, I would say. <laughs> um, so what's a good tactic, if you're running retaliation, what's a great tactic to ensure that it pops off? Your opponent doesn't have a choice. Sure. I think... Uh, so yeah, there's, once again, you know, a lot of different ways to look at it. I think, honestly, like multiple floras is a great way to keep your guys protected. Barrier is a great option that is a bit weaker now because of powers like Super Strength, Quake. Mm -hmm. You know, being able to grab Barrier or destroy Barrier, all that also seems to be a bit more common in today's game. Um, things like that are going to protect you a bit more. Another great strategy in Silver, we did not mention this figure in our Silver Age video, but the Tangent Green Lantern. Oh, yeah. from Elseworlds. Yep. She is a 45-point piece who can revive people. She can revive Colossal Retails. So if you wanted to absolutely ensure that, you could focus on protecting a smaller single base character as opposed to a big person who a lot of the times you can see. If you don't win math, it makes it difficult. And then so when those Retails are killed, she can go over there, take an action, and then bring back a Retail to do some big damage. Yeah. I think uh, in general, though, if you're really looking to protect your Retails, First consideration is theme. You yeah. want to be on a map that protects them. And then second cons consideration is body blocking and barrier. At the same time, though, you can also do like an alpha strike strategy yep. where I'm going to get yeah. in your face, deal with me up here. And then if you want to come for these retailers, you can spend a, expend a lot of actions. But now the rest of my force is really going to hurt you. Yeah. I think that might be like the best offensive way to go about it. That's personally my favorite strategy. With you, give them, you give them like two bad options ignore the force that is in their face and willing to deal them damage actively trying to deal them damage or focus on that force and the stuff that was left behind is now going to launch itself over um in 2017 i won uh, nebraska states i want to tell this story because because uh, mm. i won uh but no that tangent green lantern was played uh he played it with Ego, I was actually there for this. I yeah, this. <laughs> Ego Prime. So he sent the antibodies that Ego Prime makes over. I beat this guy in Swiss and with Goblin King. <laughs> yeah, when they when they die, Tainted Green Lantern puts a marker down, and she can resurrect anyone that was KO'd mm -hmm. to any marker that was placed. So it doesn't oh, have right. to be like the. It doesn't have to be like Surter comes back where he died. He can come back where like Robin died or whoever. It doesn't matter. But yeah, like. A big part of his team was just shove all these little bystanders and stuff into your face. You have to deal with them. And then he had Surter, Mangog. It wasn't the team. It was just all the retaliation. Big boys. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, that's definitely a good strategy. There's things like, they're very rare, but there's things like Grandmaster from uh, Thor Ragnarok movie who has, like, a power where he can force an opponent to attack a friendly, and then your mm -hmm. friendly gets to attack them. But if they target they them and damage them, like you can make them target, you know, a Scott Crampton bystander who only has a four <laughs> defense, 
and they're definitely going to hit and damage. Of the wolves. And then, yeah, then afterwards, uh, you get to retail. Um, it also triggers off things like mystics, poison. That is that is a big thing to look stuff. out for, guys. And silver, you know, clearly you've listened to the video this far. Mm -hmm. Retail's a big deal. If you are running mystics, you really have to think about what you're going to do against retail. Because let's say you're playing mystics, I'm playing an alpha strike team. I run across the board, I hit you, I take mystics. Oh, you damage me, and here comes the retail. As long as nobody's been placed that turn, but some right. of them don't follow that restriction. Yeah. So. Really be mindful of that. And if I know you have Mystics, I'll just think, okay, well, I'm not going to place anybody this turn because I want to retail you. Trust me, if you're playing a retail, you want to retail. You want the yeah. big, juicy, Dark Phoenix, Mass Destruction, Healing 10. Yeah. You want to do the fun thing the that you built game. for. Um, <laughs> another way, like if they don't have Mystics, you can just give them Mystics with Kovic. Now, she's not uh, played yeah. anymore. She's not, no. not really good, but... That it uh, was She's an fine. effect that like could happen. Check that figure out. Yeah, <laughs> there was an effect. I won't get into it, but there was an effect where you could essentially give one of your opposing pe one of the opposing pieces a Mystics team ability, and then attack them. Now they've damaged you. You get to retail that same turn. It was nuts that it worked, but it did work. It worked effectively for a while. So yeah, guys, uh, retaliation. Obviously, we didn't cover every base. There are still other great retaliators. You know, some ones we didn't name, like the Orange Proteus, who has like free barrier, barrier shuts off improved movement. People complaining about the stop sign. Proteus will be just as big of a problem, if yeah. not bigger. Uh, some other ones we didn't mention, like Giganta Prime. She's not great anymore. Uh, Wonder Skyscraper Woman. Wonder Woman is yeah. a cheap way to destroy blocking on movement. She's fantastic. Her retail's pretty solid too. Uh, who else? Uh, there's yeah, I mean, we didn't talk. There is a Legacy Ymir that's got oh, decent yeah. stats, but like, Frost Giant too does like yeah. a, a big attack, like AOE. There's probably you know five to ten more retails we didn't talk about. These are just the big ones yeah. to look out for. Hopefully, this video wasn't too long. Hopefully, you guys also enjoyed it. You know, at Dial H, we're enjoying this Silver Age series. It's fun to look back at kind of the metas that we all participated in. And uh, yeah, please like, comment, share, subscribe, really anything. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Shoot us a message if you want us to make a video about something specific in Silver or maybe even Modern. Really, whatever you want to see, let us know. You know, we are happy to make videos for you guys. It's the reason we do it. And uh, yeah, Simeon, you want to sign us off? Yeah, just remember... Every cloud has a silver lining, but even silver tarnishes. Bum, bum, bum!